Ian. Hi, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining me for our Meet the Artist interview series. Of course. So I'm starting out by asking everyone, how old were you when you started dancing? And um, how did you get started dancing? Uh, I believe I was about 10 years old. Um, and I actually started dancing because I needed to work on focusing. Do you think it helped? Yeah, I think so. Gave me some, some direction, gave me like something to focus on that I cared about. I think that was mainly the problem. Spelling tests just didn't really do it for me. <laughs> So then at what point did you decide you wanted to do it for real? Um, I think I was probably like 14, 13, 14, somewhere in there that I like really kind of <laughs> decided to kind of commit to it. So you trained locally at Dance Theater 7, yes. locally here in the San Francisco Bay Area, I should yeah. say. Um, did you go from there to a company or did you have an interim um, yeah brand? yeah i from there um at 16 i went to houston texas actually the train with the um houston valley academy um and there i joined the second company um and then from there i went to portland oregon and was an apprentice there um until i got my first job in tulsa valley uh when i was 19. So that was kind of my educational journey. Wow. Okay. So yes, when I was reading your bio, I was really impressed with the amount of um, time and distance you traveled <laughs> across the country to different yeah, countries. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I hopped for, around North America for sure. Yeah, because after Tulsa, you were also in Rochester and Alberta. So um, were all of these really different? Or was it sort of the same because you were always at a ballet company? Um, I imagine these cities being so different that yeah. I think of the role the company played would be different. Yeah, no, I think it was, it was very, um, you know, I, I mean, I, yeah, the, the each city was very different. And so, and I think each company was very different. Um, but also it was interesting um, because like I started in Houston, which is um, like an oil town. And so like, there's a lot of money for the arts and then went to Portland, which is, there's just, just seeing how um, kind of the economies of the city affect the arts and where the money comes from is really interesting and how that affects kind of what art gets done was really interesting to kind of bounce between so many diverse cities. What was it like in Alberta? Cause that's, an entirely different country. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yet not that different a country, maybe. Yeah, no, I mean, I was, um, I was very pleasantly surprised how welcoming um, people were uh, in Alberta and in Calgary. Um, there's just like a really strong uh, arts community there that was just really welcoming. And so it was just, um, for being in a new country, it was, it really, became home pretty quickly. Was it cold? Uh, yes, there's like definitely, you know, they have like the nine month winter. Um, and I definitely experienced it pretty um, directly. I lost my car like to a flood right when I moved there. So I didn't oh, have a car for the four years that I was there and I just rode my bike all the time. I probably wouldn't do that again, but it was really fun. <laughs> so I heard a rumor, so to speak, that you took time away from dancing at one point. I did, I did. And then came um, back. Yeah, I took, um, I kind of, I felt like I, I kind of got a little burnt out um, up in Calgary, um, mainly because of the welcoming arts community. I was able to start doing some projects outside of the ballet company, which was really cool. Um, but I ended up just doing like way too much performing on top of my normal performing job. <laughs> um, so I just got and I got burnt out um, and ended up taking two years um, away from like ballet performing, I guess, or with a ballet company. Um, thought I was going to become a web developer, like learned how to code and all that. Um, and then got to a point where I realized that I was capable of doing it, but I didn't really want to do it. Like it was just for the money and realized that I kind of missed dancing or at least doing something that uh, I enjoyed, um, 
which is when actually John was dancing again for Smeon. He came out of retirement and um, right. I heard he was dancing for Smeon and he told me like, hey, they're looking for guys. You might want to try auditioning. Um, somehow, <laughs> somehow get a job. So That's so awesome. Yeah, so now I'm back at it. <laughs> was there a physical like uh, shift? Not shift, but you know, did you have to get back into it physically? Yeah, absolutely. I don't, I mean, I had never until I was, I guess it would have been when I was 26, I'd never taken more than three or four weeks off from dancing. Mm -hmm. um, and so taking two years off from you know, and I was still being physically active. It wasn't like I was sitting around doing nothing, but like, right. you know, ballet is a very specific thing that you <laughs> kind of shape your body into. And so, yeah, it was definitely, um, and it was definitely a little frustrating coming back. Cause you know, I, at 26, I think that's, you know, your mid twenties are probably when you're feeling pretty good about ballet. You might not be, you know, the best dancer that you're going to be, but you definitely have the best body for it in terms of being able to recover from injuries and being still pretty flexible and really strong and coming in at, at a little bit older definitely I had to be more patient with myself it was a challenge but worth it <laughs> so you're back near where you grew up now yeah yeah so I left home when I was 16 and was you know basically gone until I guess I was yeah, around 26. Um, so I was basically gone for about 10 years. Um, yeah, and now I'm back home, which is really nice. I'm near family, near my brother. Yeah. This season is obviously very different. Yes. Um, but are there still things you're excited about? Um, yeah, actually, and uh, I was uh, thinking about this earlier. Um, getting to work uh, with my partner, Maggie, actually has been really fun. Um, we've been collaborating together to choreograph a new piece. Um, and it's just been, you know, it's, there's definitely challenges of working with someone else to create something. Um, and I wouldn't say especially with your significant other, but you know, it, there's definitely, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing to navigate, but I, uh, overall, it's been a really fun experience. Um, there, so you're it, jointly choreographing. Yeah, we're jointly choreographing. So her brother, um, came up with or created the music for us, which is really cool. We got to talk to him over the summer a little bit about kind of the vibe that we were going for and stuff and um, that came about. And then we kind of have split the music up a little bit and split sections up and kind of basically chunked out what parts uh, we're choreographing uh, separately and then also work together for like some of the partnering stuff to choreograph together. Um, do you, you were saying it's, not necessarily difficult with a significant other, but it's still different. Do you find that you're like bringing it home and-, <laughs> and Yeah, I mean, we're like, I mean, that's the thing is like, we can start, we like literally can start working on it kind of at any time, which is kind of straight, you know, it's like, you know, we'll be driving home and we'll start like, oh wait, we should do, you know, we, we start like thinking about it. So it's interesting, you don't really, yeah, it, it definitely doesn't stay in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Beyond Smewin. I think the arts have already seen so much sort of upheaval, I guess you could say, during this COVID time. So are there things you've seen shift that you think are really good and you want to see continue? And or are there things you haven't seen shift that you would like to see? Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I think what you notice is that like, you know, overall the community really has a lot of respect for the arts i mean the fact that i mean and i you know i don't exactly know how other arts organizations have coped um you know internally but like i know with smu and like we had such great support throughout this um like it didn't feel like we were kind of left behind in a sense by our community. Like I, I really think our patrons really stepped in and have made it possible for us to keep um, functioning. And I, I, I'd like to think that it's like that for a lot of uh, established arts organizations have pretty strong communities. And I think the thing that I wish it, I think like what this pandemic has done for so many things is really shown a light on maybe where there's not so much strength uh, in our kind of culture of not really supporting the arts from a like government or federal <laughs> place where you see with like Europe 
um, there was so much money coming in from the government to support the arts and yeah. realizing that like we don't have that security um, but we are fortunate enough to have the community to kind of um, I guess be there more directly which is really nice so I don't know that that's one thing that I wish would change the other thing that I I guess I'm am excited though about is that it has forced arts organizations to completely shift how they function and I mean obviously we can look at Smeon and just like going from you know our usual being able to perform you know at our regular venues and having this like pretty um, consistent way of you know performing uh, year to year um, and taking that away and just being like okay what what can we do and and the whole online classes um, that came out of this have been really cool or we're like connecting with people who wouldn't even normally even know what Smewin is which is kind of wild you know not everyone can and, you know, I, I think in maybe some people's eyes, it's like, oh, you know, tickets aren't that expensive, but not everyone can really pay that much money to go see live performances. But like, I hope that coming out of this, we have a new platform that allows people who can't make it to a live show, but can pay for, you know, some kind of online subscription that allows them to connect with dance. So you just mentioned our online classes. Yeah, yeah. Which you have been teaching in quite a lot. So do you find that teaching ballet, in particular beginning ballet, has an impact on your dancing? Um, yeah, you know, it's funny, especially um, coming back now and trying to get back into shape. I'm hearing like almost myself, my like teacher voice a little bit more as I'm coming back and like almost correcting myself more like I would correct other students than I am correcting myself normally, which is like, I'm finding I'm having a, a, a kinder tone with myself and like trying, like, I don't know. It's just after you start teaching so long, you start, yeah, I don't know. It, it just, it, it's changed how I, I guess, approach my own technique and stuff and maybe has made me think about certain things that I wasn't thinking about as much and also has changed how I, like speak to myself I think a little bit. <laughs> Have you been surprised by anything about teaching on Zoom? I think I was surprised how much I enjoyed teaching beginner ballet to like adults. Like I hadn't taught beginner ballet to adults that much and hadn't taught too many adult classes. I think I taught more to like kids but there is something really fun about you know teaching um, especially to some of uh, my students who've like never even done ballet before and getting to see them get more comfortable with the movement and just getting to see like a bunch of um, people like dancing around in their living rooms and just being like, wow, I'm like really facilitating that. Like, that's really cool. One thing we've talked a lot about sort of internally at Smewin is the fact that Zoom has potentially allowed people because you can turn your camera off to I think maybe feel more willing to try yeah, something absolutely. because you can dance like no one is watching yeah absolutely. Is watching and still benefit from it whereas it might be really daunting to have to go into the studio yeah and i think that like goes back to the just like being able to include more people into our smean community like allowing for virtual shows and allowing for these online classes like i feel like we're connecting with the community and like a um yeah, and a more kind of like, you know, you, 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 you do you. you. You enjoy like what we have to provide in whatever way you want to. And like hopefully one day we will be able to teach in person, but hopefully we'll still have online classes too so that people are able to do what they're comfortable to do and also what they're physically able to do, you know? Um, so I think that's really exciting. You've been doing a lot of gardening, right? During um, Yeah, season. I mean, a little bit. Yeah, I've- Relatively uh, speaking. Yeah, I, I mean, I started growing tomatoes. Um, we were working in Maggie's uh, backyard for a while. We propagated and saved some uh, <laughs> some cactus back there that were a little sad. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the plants. So last question, back to ballet. And you can choose to go looking toward the past or toward the future, or both if you want. All right. Do you have a favorite ballet that you've danced or choreographer who you've worked with? Or do you have a dream ballet to dance or choreographer to work with? 
Yeah, I mean, I think if, if you'd asked me this question years ago, I think I would have had a pretty like quick answer. Um, you know, I looking forward, um, I'm just like happy to be dancing. Um, so I, I think I'm just gonna, future wise, I'm just gonna enjoy um, whatever's uh, kind of coming up. But um, if I look back, um, I think uh, I got to do some Yuri Killian um, when I was in uh, Alberta and that was really fun. I did uh, Forgotten Lands and that was pretty uh, memorable. I'd always wanted to do Yuri Killian. Um, it's just really beautiful contemporary work. Um, I worked with another choreographer, uh, Wenwei Wang, who uh, did a really cool piece to video game music. So it was like really like this epic music. We were all a bunch of like, we had like these really cool, almost like anime character costumes. Um, and that was just really fun because he really allowed the dancers to kind of create a lot of their own movement and really make it very personal. And um, that was just a such a pleasure and fun experience. Cool. Thank you. So that yeah. is it. Those are all my questions for <sighs> you.